In this video, Patapons will throw sunshine on their past and the person who had betrayed them, leading to the empire collapse and depopulation. If you have no idea what I am talking about, check out the first part here. Sailing in the ocean, suffering under the burning sun, drinking salt water were insignificant challenges compared with a sea creature that hit on them after 49 days and nights. But Apons and Zigatons experienced a shipwreck, leaving most of the army at the bottom of the sea. But the hope remains as Patapon managed to survive, lonely with no people around wandering on the beach. Ah oh, shit! Here we go again. By being a god, I pledge to keep my promise to be the great leader of the Patapons, to play the drum until they reach the earth end, or until my fingers fell off. As luck would have it, Patapon managed to save the drums as well as a banner. He gives me the drums of attack and marching to accomplish the goals and find it. The next task for Hatapon is to find wounded Yaripons and Priestess Midan. Slowly strolling on the beach, Hatapon finds survivors and Midan surrounded by things in masks. Somehow they know who Patapons are, but how? Say no sorry or hello, they immediately start to attack. And getting rebuffed, they put their tails between the legs and run away in panic, probably to deliver news to their generals. Patapons survivors are found, but still, Zigatons are found missing. Magical small letters explain to us that these creatures in masks are Carmans. Remember Queen Karma? And so they are tied to her by no means whatsoever. We then knew about old abandoned ruins of Patapon's city, Patapolis, which looks exactly like the city from the first part. It's the best place to start their journey over and gain some power. Everything must happen again, battles, evolving, fighting for achieving it. But first, Patapons have to go through the obelisk and get food for people. Generally speaking, the setting stays the same, except for some minor elements, like names of songs at the beginning of missions, a skull which shows that Patapons will lose track if I continue to follow the bad rhythm. There is a big new feature in the second game, which changes the gameplay and which you will not be able to miss. I just don't want to spoil, so you will see it later. After getting food on the beach, Patapons are heading to the jungle where the treasure chest is found. It might give different resources, from weapons and materials to money. My Patapons are lucky to find a like for this video and a nice shield to equip to whom? I don't have Tatapons yet. So what do I need to do to find them? Hmm. Exactly! Who the hell knows? Let's watch the second video to understand what happens next. Deep in the jungle, Patapons meet Ben the Tetapon. Again, I have Patapon flashbacks. Nothing special happens here, so I am speedrunning through the jungle. Ben the Tetapon peacefully passes away, leaving bits of knowledge, letting Patapons create shield bearers through the life tree called Matter. Now I am ready to give birth to my first melee warriors, Tetapons, and give one of them the ice shield. Wait a second, I cannot create them because the life tree is broken. Me then tells Patapons it's about time to find the life tree sprout. There is a mission of challenging might of Patapons. The point is to speedrun the location as fast as you can to obtain the best treasure chest. After farming chests for a while, Patapons come out of the jungles to the desert, where according to rumors a wingless dragon Dodonga lives. On their way, player Pons army meets a huge boulder and a warrior in a golden mask with lightning on it, lying beneath the stone. Probably it's a reverse flash of Patapons world or Harry Potter Potter, I don't give a damn about it. The most important that the stranger is ready to join our army if we free him. And actually it's easier said than done. After three weeks of hitting the rock, Dodonga crawls out of his shelter and perhaps out of peace decides to help us by spitting the fire to the boulder. Unconsciously, Dodonga destroys seals on the cobblestone, which trapped the Patapotter. By breaking the seals, the boulder disappears. Haripon takes a lesser stone and throws it at Dodonga's head. Inhuman ah! reactions! That's what I call thankfulness. Out of injustice, Dodonga loses one of its eggs and runs away to the next life, making the path free to the next destination. But first, Patapons must deliver news to me then. Patapot Patapon's tribe and the egg are rolling back to the village to introduce two newly found creatures. Midan reveals a new legend about one special Patapon. Funny looking mask dude will save the world after meeting Kami, the great Patapon. Midan decides to give a name to this new Patapon, which is why Patapotter dude shockingly asks, isn't she crazy to give him a name? Yes, but actually no. 
The point is that there is the second part of the legend. Once a masked dude is found, he must be given a name. Therefore, he will be obligated to serve unquestionably to the name giver. And a hero has no choice but to accept his new name. Hero. It then also speaks of the second thing, the egg. It can be used in the Paragate Shrine, one of the new features of Patapon 2. The Paragate Shrine is a lobby for online raids where you can play up to 4 heroes and only heroes. I want to mention the pressures of developers. As every game, Patapon franchise could die out in the future, or at least multiplayer part, and there will be no online players. So they created CPU controlled heroes, allowing playing it alone. The best part of this raid is a chance to get the best equipment for your hero or army and materials as well as money. Hero decides to enter the Paragate Shrine. There, it turns out every hero class has a super ability. If you can follow the perfect beat. And if your army is in a fever mode. Anyways, different abilities can be used in plenty of situations to find the best solution. Such as my favorite hero class, Yaripon, can throw an explosive spear to erase everything out of the existence. Or Yamipon shoots penetrating arrows to penetrate all objects. It deals relatively low damage, but can be used in some cases. During the raid, heroes must carry the egg to a pedestal, where it can be light, and by dancing, they must break it to get reward. The better they dance, the better reward is. That's it about Paragate, back to business. As smart letters say, there is the matter sprout somewhere in the ruins. The place is protected by another Dodonga, but Hero will help us. He adds new colors to the party. <laughs> After some fight, Dodonka kindly leaves the sprout of matter. Since now I am able to create new types of warriors, and even here there is a new nice surprise. In the first game, to make a new type of warrior, you needed to exterminate your soldier by any means available, and start evolving him afresh to gain needed requirements. But now, Patapons have an evolving tree. You can start with a usual Patapon and evolve him to the pedophile demon or fish if it's needed, and then change his type. That saves tons of materials and hours. My gratitude to developers. Thanks. Finally, I created Patapons with shields, and can give to the luckiest one the ice shield. But then thinks that now the Patapons are ready to fight, and she suggests attacking Carmen's tower. Attacking the forts, Patapons army faces huge towers. It seems and feels it's impossible to come through. But the camera goes up, showing a familiar silhouette on the top of the tower. This person throws a mask away and turns out it's a Turns out this person is gone. Neither he nor we know how that can be that he is alive. Yet. And while he's speaking with Patapons, Zigatons are jumping out of the bushes. He warns though that he was killed once, but Zigatons don't care about it. They care only about revenge to Patapons. However, Gong helps to destroy high towers and then his soldiers and he are running away. The Carmens are approaching player Pons army to wipe the floor with Patapons faces, trying to protect an unknown mountain. At this point, everything comes full circle. Zigatons are enemies again, Patapons are trying to find it at the earth end, Midan understands nothing about the situation. Only player pawn knows that soon all the secrets will be revealed. All masks are unveiled. For some period of time, the battles with the Carmens are finished, because bizarre creatures are on the way of God's army. It's about time to hunt some monsters. On their way, Patapons come to the Gangara wasteland, where Lord Gon is waiting to say that soon Patapons will have to fight with an invincible spider, Sanchura, which can be seen only in the rain. That's why Gon teaches Patapons the juju of calling the rain and leaves the place. It's unclear what happens now, but I'm thankful. By looting a brand new necklace of Fangs, Patapons are half dead but happy to come back to the Patapolis to develop troops. Midan delivers news from the scouts that Gang wants to settle things once and for all near the mountain Gunrock. By reaching the mountain, a dying Patapon scout says that a real threat is not Gang and his army, but and he dies saying no more. Entering the battlefield, Gong announces the way of how to find the truth. They need to look at this sky. If the Patapons want to pass through, they need to show their real strength, otherwise Gong will stop them. Again, I don't really believe that Gong is a real enemy here. He is a victim of his pride and honor. Nevertheless, he makes a fair gesture to the Patapons. Suddenly, in the middle of the fight, fire arrows are hitting the backs of the Zigaton army. Its masked tribe Carmen sneaked behind the Zigatons. Carmen decided to kill two birds with one stone, and that's where they realized 
they are fucked up. It was a bad move from the Carmens and they deserve no mercy. Withdrawing his troops and throwing to us a healing portion to restore health, Gong says sorry for his mistakes and promises to leave Patapons alone. I can forgive Gong quite easily, because of his owner but not the Carmens. After the bloodshed, the Patapons return to the Patapolis and Midan claims that she doesn't understand the words of Gong about looking at the skies, but adds that Patapons will not pass to heaven anytime soon, because they are protected by their almighty Kami, the player pawn. Zigatons are no longer a danger, so we have only one enemy, the Karmans. As Kami's army was succeeded to win the day, they overpassed the Ganrak mountain and reached a Gigi cliff, where the forces of the Karmans are hiding. But they are nothing but just an excellent way to obtain new equipment. Coming through the Gigi cliff, Patapons find themselves literally on the skies. I mean, they can walk on the clouds. I wonder how soon will Patapons go to space to find it, like in Fast and Furious. <laughs> However, they aren't the first people who stepped their foot there. The Carmens are waiting with an enormous cloud-like demon Faramatara. Perhaps that's what Gong was talking about. A news worth finding. Next to the speaking plate there is a stone which looks like the same stone which was thrown by Hero when he was freed. Also the plate says that that's the stone fault, probably it talks about an occurrence of the demon. And even mid then thought that such demons don't exist anymore. So my theory is that when Patapons tried to save Hera, the Donga broke the seals, the boulder disappeared and the demon was let out. So seals were not only holding Hera alone, but Faramatara as well. So that's the Donga's fault. I even have a possible theory about a creature that captured Hero under the stone. But in case of spoilers I will talk about it later. The battle with Faramatara and the creature itself are something. Firstly, it's an abnormal being and is never met during the game again. Secondly, it's protected by Carmens on flying penguins and the demon has simultaneous attacks which make it difficult to defend. Overall, it took me 2 or 3 hours to prepare for the battle and kill it. Back in the village, scouts report about a flying castle in the skies where once lived an ancient god, but now the place is occupied with the Carmens. Inside it's quite cold cozy and bright, nice interior design filled with ugly Carmens and new enemies, Dark Ones. Dark Ones are demon warriors wearing scorpion helmets and who were summoned from the underworld. Shortly after, the Patapons are met by a flying black star, Hushapon, who made a pact with Zygotons in the first game. Since now she yes it's she, plays a bigger part. On the side of Black Hushapon there are Dark Ones and masked Lord Dark One. He doesn't understand why, but he already hates Patapons and immediately attacks. The fight is slow but easy. After some time on our side appears Lord Gong, who mentions that the thing in the middle of the castle, it's a cage for the gods. We have no choice but to eliminate all enemies and free the deity, which me then mentioned about. After the battle and release of the creature, Gong asks to kill a mighty demon to save the soul of Lord Dark One. Have you already guessed who Lord Dark One is? Playing a detective, it gets clear that Lord Dark One is Makaton from the first part, who is avenging for his love. He hates the Patapons already, but probably cannot remember why. Also, Gang knows this Lord, and his warriors are wearing scorpion helmets. And if you remember, when Makaton sold his soul, he got a name Scorpiton and started to wear a scorpion helmet. It all makes sense now. Gang and Makaton were resurrected, but Gong became independent. Why? You will understand why later. Speaking about the theory of who captured Hero, in my opinion it was a magical creature, powerful enough to perform such a difficult spell. Black Hushapon, she is evil by her nature, so there is a chance that Hero and Black Hushapon had met before. In Patapolis, Miden remembers an ancient ancient legend that speaks of this. Huge rainbow colored egg at the sacred land known as the world core, a great evil tempted a single Wakapon to break the egg. The egg broke into countless shards and so with it the world was shattered. That's how the Patapons lost their country. Um, yeah, sure. After saving the god, the Patapons come down to earth but something happened there. There is sugar everywhere. Oh, wait, it's snow. At the start of the mission, Patapons will come across a Carmen fort with two soldiers guarding it. They are known as Aymen and Mako men. 
and both are killed. <laughs> no second Makaton in the future. After the lost battle at the flying castle, Makaton has changed his equipment. Mounted the flying parrot, he starts to speak with Black Hashapon, killing me not with the weapon, but with boredom. And additionally, the army of Makaton is speaking some hellish language. Oh man, it's real hell out there learning these words. It's funny that after a final blow, Dark Ones... Oh, come on. It's not so funny already, but after final blow, Dark One's dying with the phrase my will is gone. So does it mean that all their existence is supported by hatred to the Patapons? Listening to the chit chat of Black Hashapon and Makaton, Patapon's tribe is erasing everything on their way, boldly dancing to hard bus, slowly reaching it. Back in the village, Miden remembers a moment from the past about two Zigaton soldiers, Aiton and Makaton. The scout says that Aiton was killed and Miden in the manner of Gul'dan, responds that she tried to stop Patapons, so she got what she had deserved. Um... Well, they are trying to remind us about Aiton and Makaton, but you already know what happened with them, my precious. Mwah. At the Winter Wasteland, the Patapons are being awaited by Makaton and Black Hashapon. But this time our small Alexander the Great has changed his bird to the horse. Good decision, because he penetrated my butthole along with my brain, destroying my brain cells. That's one of the most difficult missions in this game. Cold is freezing, arrows are hitting knees, and in the second part of the mission resurrected General Beat Tilton appears. What a surprise. But one eternity later, the Patapons are victorious, and as Miden has nothing to say, all Patapons are boozing all night. The next morning, Patapons are reaching the ruins where once great wars began and came to an end. The tribe gazes upon a fragile tower, destroying which releases a flying golden star. He calls himself Hashapon too, but fortunately this is our bro. He's a little bit crazy, but you know, he's good and generous as he gives the Patapons money, but on only one condition. If the Patapons will stop beating drums and listen to him. Golden Hashapon says that he is Black Hashapon and gives away a black star. Suddenly Black Hashapon flies out of the horizon and insists that Golden Hashapon is a fake. Yeah, you know, sometimes friends are crazy. <laughs> Listening to this heart melting story, the Patapons decide to take a black star and under all the coin sound, get out of there. That's what happens with stars when big money enters their life. And that's not even a joke. In the shelter, Miden passes a remark that although she can't stand Black Hashapon, she is killed. Confusion! By the way, the black star which we were given by Golden Hashapon opens a way to a new monster and new melody of a power attack. After learning new melody, clouds grow heavier and ancient evil is closing in, seeking revenge. A demon has been summoned, but this time Gate Ghoul Bababa. What am I doing with my life? And more deformed immortal Makaton on his side, find the difference. Everything happens identically as in the first game. Gate is destroyed, Makaton becomes mortal and gets killed. Black Hashapon calls him a pet and flies away. Should I cry the second time? Of course I feel sorry for Makaton, but still, his story hasn't ended yet. After the death of Makaton, Beetleton challenges Patapons to fight. He had one living mushroom which spreads spores and sends enemies to sleep, 50 black ones who leave behind tons of weapons and approximately thousands of health points. It took me about 45 minutes to kill him. For me, it's the longest fight in the game history. I literally aged in two years. When the Patapons beat Beetleton, a demon Garuru appears on the sky and disappears. After sending back to hell all relatives of demons from the first part, the Carmen's remind about themselves, jumping out of the bushes. Haven't missed them honestly. The challenge is that I need to cross the desert again and a bunch of Carmen's are ready to stop the Patapons. After crossing the desert, Patapons have finally become tanned and reached the oasis where I have realized that I have been experienced deja vu every mission. On the way of the Patapons there is a windmill which stops arrows and spears, but the Patapons are stronger. The desert was the last barrier before the mainland of Carmen's nation. It's high time to see who has been giving orders to the Carmen's all this time. Carbon's conversations between three generals are taking place in the jungles. The Patapons need to be quiet and not expose themselves. They are hiding in the bushes. 
to reveal the secrets of the enemies. From enemies' speeches, it gets clear that Zygotons attacked one of the Carmen's fortresses, bringing with them a catapult. Most Carmen warriors disconnect the shot to protect their grounds against Zygotons. However, the rest of the army is still very strong. In fact, you don't want to be overconfident about them. By breaking through the first wave of enemies, Patapons attack the hut, on the peak of which there is a sleeping masked creature. Patapons wake the spirit-looking Carmen, and it starts to throw fireballs. The stranger isn't very dangerous, but immortal, and it takes just a little time to stand his attacks and come forward. On the other hand, now we know that even evil sleeps sometimes. Niden says that this creature is Orman Carmen, also known as a leader of the Carmens. Although Carmen people believe that he has been living for a few hundred years, Niden is still older than he is. After the news Patapons have heard recently, they decide to help Zygotons in their attacks on Carmens. Zygotons have come further and reached the gates that protect inland. These gates are protected by the best warriors, if not legends, so there is no chance to prevail. But Patapons are experienced creatures as well. They make up their mind to borrow the best weapon in the game from Zygotons to break gates. It wouldn't be a Patapon game if everything was so easy. Unfortunately, the catapult was stolen from Zygotons far behind. Patapons need to step back and drag the catapult to the gates. On their way there are three generals, Snowman, Kimen and Huckman. Whoa, I mean, there were three generals. And if you think I'm too violent with them, listen to this. The last General Huckman burned down the whole forest to wipe out one Patapon's village. And that's not all. Before his death, he thanked the Patapons for killing his comrades, because he will be a favorite and only general of Orman Carmen himself. He is so bad that even a video with him didn't want to play. The Patapons made their way back with a new weapon and only one goal – break the gates. In process of fight, the catapult is destroyed, but our brothers in arms, Zygotons, come to help us. It turns out Zygotons build up their Ziggerzank again to bring destructions to a common enemy in masks. While Zygotons and Patapons are bringing destructions, Miden is stolen again, this time by the Carmens. What's the point to be older than Orman Carmen, but not able to fly? The Patapons saved and step inside of Carmen's inner lands. They find themselves in the place of their past. It's their kingdom, Patapol, where once they ruled over a large area. But it was in the past. In the present, the Carmens infested the place along with the Orman Carmen. He thinks now he will decide the fate of the Carmens and the Patapons once and for all. He uses some powerful magic. At first, he doesn't look tough enough, but gives a bit of a challenge. Suddenly, their illusions start to appear in the background. Turns out they are visions from the past. The visions tell what happened many years ago with the Patapon Empire and why they lost everything. Once upon a time, Orman Carmen along with demons, started to feel jealous of Patapon's good nature. Because neither Orman Carmen nor demons have one. Orman Carmen decided to be fool one Patapon, a Wakapon, who had relationships with the princess of Patapons. Orman Carmen whispered to Wakapon that the princess is always in danger, and danger is increasing. Panic-stricken Wakapon made an audacious move. Under the pressure of Orman Carmen, he managed to break the world egg, or huge rainbow-colored egg which keeps the universe up. Somehow he tried to save the princess. It happened that the shattered egg didn't break in pieces. Just cracks started to crop up. Out of cracks, powerful demons invaded the world. Hatapon, seeing all this, asked Patapon Trifecta, Don, Chin and Khan, who replaced even more ancient warriors, Don, Ben and Gan, to save the princess and Miden. They must have saved two ladies, but failed. For Miden it was too late, probably she fainted. Anyway, Hatapon thought she is dead. While Patapons were losing their power, demons were rampaging inside of Patapol. Gazing at everything Wakapon has done, he couldn't bear anymore and put on a mask to become stronger at the cost of his memory. Patapons made everything they could, but lost the battle anyway. Everything happened exactly as Orman Carmen foresaw. He executed such an awful plan to make the princess of Patapons his queen to rule Patapons and Carmens all together. Even though the battle was lost, Patapons princess refused an offer of Orman Carmen to become his queen. He accepted such an answer and imprisoned her inside of the world tag. Orman Carmen conquered the Patapol and made the rest of the Patapons flee. But after all what happened, the 
princess always believed that once Wakapon, also known as Hero, will restore his memory and save Patapons. While Kami's tribe was fighting with Orman Carmen and Hero was restoring his memory, Orman Carmen confessed that he hates Patapons even more than he used to. Nearly close to extinction, they managed to restore powers and even befriend Zigatons. This phrase makes me remember Gong, Makaton and Beetleton. They were resurrected by Black Hushapon, and to make them fight on his side, three ex-generals were put on masks to erase their memory and make them even stronger. Gun managed to remember everything at first sight on Patapons. Probably that's why he put off the mask. He even asked to save his comrade Makaton, who left him die in the past, showing that probably Gun still has a soul or good in him. Makaton, by contrast, didn't remember anything, just hated Patapons for no reason, but couldn't recover his past. And Beetleton is just stupid. Mask or no mask, he won't remember anything. Everything makes Makes sense now, and Patapons risk their future getting done with Orman Carmen. Fortunately, he isn't immortal anymore. Under the pressure of fire, ice, and the hammer, Patapons successfully killed him. But before his very death, he released the strongest demon, Detan Carmen. And frankly speaking, he is the strongest in two games. I've tried many tactics to outperform the demon, learned his moveset, but couldn't escape his consumption of Patapons, bringing me to the failure again and again. And then a thought struck me. I need to simply change hero's class to Tatapon, shield bearer, and make my army invincible. In feats and starts, I finally succeeded and took Patapol over. Marching on the bridge, a group of Patapons are about to reach the earth end and gaze upon it. They finally see something, an egg. By force of habit, they start to attack it. Do they really have a good nature? The egg shatters, releasing rays of light, making a rainbow and blinding Patapons for a second. Seconds later, Patapons behold a nice chick, Patapon Princess. Hero cannot believe to his eyes, he made it, he saved his nation. After a long sleep, Princess thanks her savers, comforting Hero, saying that his journey finally comes to an end. And starts a new one, because he has the world to save. Legend said that Hero once will save Patapons, along with the world, over the Rainbow Bridge. She sends Hero to new adventures, and tells that she is always there for him, waiting and praying. But Hero cannot hear her, because he fell asleep. I've got way more pleasure after completing the second part than after the first one. The story set the record straight about Patapon's losses. Anyway, in process of playing the second game, I couldn't help thinking that developers didn't have enough resources to complete the first part as they wished. Or maybe they tested the waters and didn't expect success for the Patapon series. That's why when Patapon first was successful, they made the second part, which for me is a director's cut with a totally complete story. And characters. I couldn't even imagine that such cute childish stylistics hide such a wonderful, powerful adult tale. So that's the end of the second part of Patapons, but there will be greater adventures, new legends, heroes and villains, tales and nightmares in the third part. If you liked my recap of the story, give a like to support my work and subscribe for more content. Thank you and see you in Patapon 3 Story Explained. Bye bye!